Hello, my name is Todd Miller and I am a managing consultant at the Partners Group. I am just one of the many experts that we have that help employers solve very complex and challenging issues around their employee benefit programs. Like many of my colleagues, I have over 20 years of industry experience. I uh, spent a large portion of that time working on the insurance carrier side and have been working on the consulting side for about the past 10 years. Our agenda for today is to discuss four trends we see impacting employers when it comes to their benefit program in 2018. The first time we're going to discuss is really how do you go about developing a personalized benefit program for a multi-generational workforce. Next, we're going to talk about the rise of the portable benefit with a gig economy. Third, we're going to talk about how financial well-being is programs are really starting to take traction throughout the U.S. And then finally, we're going to talk about how technology is starting to play a greater role. So the first item we're going to discuss today is how do you go about developing a personalized benefit program for a multi-generational workforce. There's an unusual phenomenon occurring in today's workforce. There are three distinct generations, baby boomers, generation Xers, and millennials are all working alongside each other at most organizations. With low unemployment and improving economy, retaining good employees has become a rising concern. The first step in developing a multi-generational approach to benefits is looking at what employees need versus what they have today. According to the Employee Benefit Research Institute, nearly 7 out of 10 boomers rank their health care coverage as the most important benefit, higher than a 401k or pension. Generation Xers say not having enough money to retire really is what keeps them up at night. And most millennials will prefer having a higher take-home pay versus paying more for a benefit program. By designing a benefit program that offers and meets the needs of a diverse workforce, you'll be better prepared to attract and retain employees. Prioritizing communication through a diverse channel. Communicating employee benefits for a multi-generational workforce should include multiple channels that allow employees to self-select the method they prefer. According to a survey done by One Digital, boomers like honest, simple language surrounding their benefit and financial planning programs. Generation Xers like casual informational sessions, while Millennials prefer multi-platform employee-facing communications that offer a wide array of benefit offerings. Different generations value benefits differently, which is why it's important to look at employee demographics when designing your benefit program. Millennials might value a high deductible health plan that would be paid at 100% by the employer versus a low deductible health plan that they would have to help subsidize. Boomers are more likely to value a benefit program that they might have to help pay for, but provide a higher level of benefit. And finally, we're going to talk about flexible benefit strategies to engage your entire workforce. As Generation Z enters the workforce and plays a greater role in workforce dynamics, the need for personalized benefit programs will continue to accelerate. Those who embrace the flexibility benefit strategy will be much better prepared to attract and retain employees. The next item we're going to discuss today is the rise of portable benefits in a gig economy. For those of you that aren't familiar with that term, you soon will be. What a gig economy is, is it's a job that folks take on a gig basis or on a temporary basis. Think of it as a 1099 employee, an Uber driver, a freelance professional that might be taking a part-time employment so they can have more work-life balance. In essence, a gig economy is an environment in which temporary positions are common and organizations contract with independent workers for short-term engagements. In a gig economy, businesses save resources in terms of benefits, office space, and training. They also have the ability to contract with experts for specific projects who might be too high priced to maintain on staff full-time. From the perspective of a freelancer, a gig economy can improve work-life balance over what is possible in most jobs. Ideally, the model is powered by independent workers selecting the jobs that they're interested in rather than one which people are forced into. An estimated 55 million Americans work for themselves. Intuit, the owner of TurboTax, is seeing the size of the gig workforce firsthand. They estimate that the gigging workforce now make up about 34% of the workforce, which is expected to grow to 43% by the year 2020. Portable benefit legislation has been proposed in multiple states that would require companies to pay into a nonprofit fund that would provide health insurance, retirement, and other benefits to the gig workforce. Funding could be provided by a fee assessed to the consumer and allow this group of professionals to have access to the same level of benefits as their W-2 counterparts. 
Voluntary portable benefits include such things as life insurance, critical illness, accident insurance, 401ks or 403b plans, as well as health savings accounts. In Washington and New Jersey, legislation would require companies to pay into a nonprofit fund. This fund would provide health insurance and retirement benefits to the gig economy. Funding could be supported by a fee imposed on the consumer. California and New York also have lobbyists seeking to introduce portable benefit bills to the gig workforce. The third item that we would like to discuss today is really how we're starting to see financial wellness programs taking off and gaining traction throughout the U.S. While lagging more traditional benefits such as medical, dental, life, and disability insurance, financial programs are closing the gap. Employers are now seeing financial wellness programs as a way to expand their compensation and benefits program to better attract and retain a diverse workforce. The reality is, as most employers are in the early stages of developing these programs, and some employers struggle to even define what workplace financial wellness is. In a 2016 survey published by Charles Schwab, employers reported that their obstacles for not offering a financial wellness program really included things such as not understanding how the benefits work, they didn't really think much about it, or they don't have the staff or resources to support such a program. When designing a financial wellness program within your organization, we would recommend that you look at the workforce that you have to see where the program would best help your employee population. Do employees need guidance on basic financial principles? Would they value a specific program such as tuition reimbursement or a 401k? The key to any successful financial wellness program is to understand your employee demographics and design a plan that meets their needs. Most importantly, employers need to integrate their financial wellness program with their existing benefit and compensation package. According to a survey put together by MetLife called Work Redefined, A New Age of Benefits, 30% of employees they surveyed working for large organizations say they lay awake at night worried about money, and 23% say they are less productive at work because of financial worries. And be sure to include online digital access to education and tools, which allow your employees and their family members to access the tools and resources where and when they need them. Finding a balanced, well-communicated program that is targeted at your employee population will make your organization an employer of choice. The last item we would like to discuss today, which we don't think is much of a surprise, is we are starting to see a greater use of technology, tools, and resources to help drive consumer engagement. Here at the Partners Group, we've seen a dramatic increase for the need to help our clients better understand their options when evaluating payroll or a human resource system, which is also known as a HRIS. More employers are turning to technology to help automate benefit enrollment, onboarding, recruiting, and performance management. To meet this need, we've invested internal resources to help guide our clients through a discovery process to pair them with the right vendor solutions. Technology is also playing a huge role in employee, consumer, and cost transparency. In response to that reality, a growing number of digital health tools have come to market. Companies such as Healthcare Blue Book, Maven Clinic, and Vim aim to help consumers manage their healthcare spend and decision making. There are several technology-based companies that have the ability to provide incentives to steer consumers to lower cost, higher quality facilities. As transparency and cost and quality continues, more tools and resources will surely hit the market. Telemedicine and digital health are on the rise. Many insurance carriers include telemedicine at little or no cost to their fully insured clients. Telemedicine is not new, but we've seen a rise in utilization as more people become comfortable with the digital age. And with the growing availability of health information and the rise in health screenings, DNA testing, and genetic testing, we are becoming more knowledgeable as a society. Soon, you'll be able to check your genetic makeup on your phone to identify potential future illnesses. This knowledge presents a big challenge to the insurance industry, as possible buyers will already know their likelihood to become ill. Those are just a few of the employment benefit trends shaping 2018. As I mentioned, I work in the Employer Services Division at the Partners Group, which entails retirement planning, employee benefits, data analytics, and health and productivity. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch our informational video today. If you have any additional questions about any of the items or programs that we discussed, please feel free to contact us directly. 
In addition, we have a number of educational seminars that we put on throughout the course of the year. We put together weekly updates to talk about things that are going on around healthcare reform, legislation, FMLA. For those of you that are not familiar with the Partners Group, we are a privately held, regionally based brokerage firm headquartered out of Portland, Oregon, but we also have offices in Bellevue, Washington, Lake Oswego, Bend, and Bozeman, Montana.